Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar session. So my name is Dr. Gaudi and I'm a lecturer at School of Bioscience, Faculty of Medicine. So today we are presenting Discover Yourself uh, for G Genetic Inborn Talent by Mr. Prabhu Siddham Param. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please try, uh, type them into the questions box. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end. So now without further ado, we will turn the time over to Mr. Prabhu. Mr. Prabhu is a clinical hypnotherapist as well as a genetic brain profiling expert, a certified neuropsychology professional under Pandidikan Persatuan Counselor Pandidikan Malaysia. He is personally engaged with in-house team members to do research on giving the best solution for mental health clients. He also works with integrative solution to connect nutrition, hypnosis, genetic brain profiling, along with biofeedback method to treat adult ADD and early stage of autistic condition with high successful rate. His main area is actually to find someone's inborn talent as early as four years old and help them to deliver their strength and manage their weakness to have a successful career in life. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Prabhu. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so let me share my slides over here. Okay, welcome to the very important session. My name is Prabhu once again. Uh, I'm working in the area of psychotherapy, uh, epigenetics, and also the area of uh, neuroplasticity. So we are a team of uh, mental health professionals, counselors, functional medicine doctors. We are working together to give the best solution and the fastest solution. Okay. So one of my core, core work is mainly on what's called uh, genetic brain profiling. Genetic brain profiling is a very interesting uh, method that I've actually learned and I'm actually uh, using this method for various purposes. Uh, obviously, the number one purpose will be identifying your inborn talent. And I also use this method to identify someone's mental health condition and also some neurodevelopment issues. So through that, I can really identify what is the issue and I can give them a best solution. Usually anyone in the field of mental health, we only talk about the mind and we, we rarely talk about uh, the brain. Uh, unless you go to a psychiatrist, they will be more focusing on the brain. But the thing is, when you are prescribing something, when you are actually giving them a solution, you need to see the organ of this particular, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, the mind, right? For example, you want to give uh, medication for a liver problem. You will you will actually do uh, ultrasound, blood screening, everything, then only give solution. But for mental health, it's pretty much based on what are you telling them. So I believe that when we look into the area of the brain, and uh, obviously from what they are actually telling you and you combine everything, you can give the best solution. So this is my area of work, okay? Okay, I just want you to imagine this particular uh, scenario in your mind. Imagine you are at the age of 35 or 40, you are married with children, okay? Every day you are dragging yourself to work just to pay bills and run the family. But deep within yourself, you feel unhappy and wanted to, to live a life filled with happiness, passion, determination, 
with a purpose for yourself. And you slowly begin to give up because of the commitments and lack of clarity in your life. So I hope you can, you can visualize this. I hope you can digest this. So how many of you can relate to this? How many of you can relate to this? How many of your family members or anyone whom you know are currently going through this? And very important question is, how many of you don't want to go through this? This is a very important question, okay? Like whatever that I'm sharing now, it's, uh, it's from my own experiences. And I've, I've actually found, the moment I found the solution for my problem, which is clarity, passion, the best career, the moment I found the solution, I, I, I tell to myself, if I take this and I actually share it with many people, it can save nearly 20 years of their lifetime because all of us is based on trial and errors. You know, uh, you know we finish our, 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 our school, after that we go to college. Uh, we sometimes, we, uh, we just choose the courses that we think it actually works well for us. And after that, Obviously, you you have to work because the investment already you already put a heavy investment on that, and then you started to work. After a couple of years, you realize that maybe this is not what I'm looking for. You know, by the time you realize that and you change, it takes a lot of a lot of your time. Okay. Did you know if one lives till the age of seventy? Retirement age, you know, uh, in, in Malaysia, retirement age, let's say 55 to 60 years. We spend an average of 11 to 13 years of working. 11 to 13 years working, which is 19% of our lifetime. This is, I'm not calculating overtime. I'm not calculating traffic, you know. So many of us that, you know, many of us spend that 19% of our life I would say many of, of us, uh, based on my experience, when I'm talking to people, most of them, they will say that, oh, I'm unhappy. Even they, they could be in a very big position. Um, they have a very big status. Sometimes they don't feel satisfied. You know, they're unhappy and they are under a lot of stress. And stress is not good for you. It will reflect in your professional life and it will reflect in your personal life and your health, everything, okay? Now, I have solution for this. I've, I found the solution and I would like to share a solution uh, to all of you. Now, I'm doing this for the past four and, four and a half years. The moment I realize uh, there is a such method um, the method I'm, I'm actually going to, about to share, it is not a very new method. It is actually nearly 200 to 300 years old, uh, uh, you know, very old method, okay? The moment I, I got to know about this method, I got fascinated and I asked myself, oh my God, this is a very important uh, a test and very important uh, method that really can benefit me, you know? So, so... This is called a genetic profiling, and this is also known as dermatoglyphic genetic profiling text. It is absolutely based on scientific methodology with 300 years of research. Um, it, it, it is analyzed and proven with the evidence in anthropology, genetics, medicine, statistics. In recent years, uh, USA, Japan, and Taiwan have applied this methodology diagnose individual with Down syndrome, congenital dis disorders, and genetic abnormalities. Yes, the initial stage is, um, this is when we say dermatoglyphics, it's technically using your fingerprint to map your inborn talent. Uh, it is initially start as a dactyloscopy, which is under forensic science. Uh, that is only for identifi identification purpose. But later on, 
the fingerprint moved to the next level, what's called a dermatoglyphics. The same process has also successfully identified individual excellence in various industries like education, human resource management, employee recruitment, and sports. In 1970s, Soviet Union used this method to identify the inborn talent of an individual. You know, they will say that, okay, this boy, you know, send him to medical school. This, this, this particular person, send him to engineering. This is how they use. Probably you will ask yourself, why, if this method is, it's, it's really powerful, why we all don't know, don't know about this. Now, this is technically a, a science was kept secret among few nations. Um, you know, US, when you compare with US and uh, Russians, they always have this own secret program, secret space program. They have a lot of secret programs so that they can actually develop or to raise the human capital, you know, so, so that th there's a huge competition among them, you know, which country we become powerful. So all this method is kept among themselves. Whoever that actually do research, it's just among themselves. Only now recently is revealed to the public. Okay. What is dermatoglyphic? Dermatoglyphic genetic profiling test is a biometric assessment system developed by scientists and medical experts based on genetics, embryology, dermatoglyphics, neuroscience, and pediatric psychology through observation, records, comparison, summarization in combination of clinical experiences. It's purely uh, on a scientific base. Okay, so Dermatoglyphics, the word loosely means that derma means skin, glyphic means pattern or curve. Um, it's a scientific a rich pattern of skin dermal ridges, ridges present in our on the fingers, toes, soles of humans. Now, the huge difference between dactyloscopy, which they use for criminal identification, is only fingers. But dermatoglyphics is is overall, it's, it's fingers, toes, and soles of, of humans. It reveals the congenital link between our fingers and intrinsic quality and talents, okay? Now, how can I, from fingers, I can actually can map my, my inborn talent, you know? Sometimes, you, if, 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 if you first time you hear this, you will feel like, how is that possible? Now, let me share with you. When do fingerprints form? Okay, as early as the 13th week in the womb, in our mother's womb, the skin ridges begin to form and fully form on the, uh, on the 24th week. And these are developed in tandem with the brain cell, meaning to say the finger ridges and the brain cells started to form at the same time. Okay, I give you a rare condition. This is one of the turning point for them to go into uh, dermatoglyphics. Uh, this is where they find the correlation. This is one of the rare condition. This is called uh, a strange condition uh, where the children are born without brain or born without some part of the brain. This is called an encephaly. They do not have fingerprints. For them, you know, the fingerprints, you know, it's something you, you, you use the fingerprint on a day to day to hold or grip something, right? Um, for this infants, it's very flat. There's no ridges over there, you know? So this is one of the example where the connection between, because there's no brain and uh, there's no ridges. So it's, it is a direct connection. And obviously, this um, infants will not actually live longer, uh, maybe a year or two. So this is one of the correlations, one of the examples of correlations. Now, what is, how, how, exact works, how exactly it works? Now, when I mentioned that our fingerprint and the brain cell started to develop at the same time, Meaning to say that whatever that happened here, happening here in our brain, we can get the data from our fingers. 
okay so what we'll get is the functional part of the cerebral cortex of an individual can be analyzed from the from the skin finger ridges okay so for an example right we have five fingers right now let's say we take the the reach we, we do the analysis on the ridges over here now your thumb it represents prefrontal of your brain prefrontal area of your brain your index finger is on a frontal your middle finger it's on a parietal your ring finger it's on a temporal lobe and your pinky finger or a little finger it's on a occipital lobe so it works this way you know and obviously two hands right left hand right hemisphere you know you can map this whole thing okay how how interesting is this okay now let's go into a little bit on the uh, fingerprint patterns obviously there are more fingerprint patterns uh, but the basic fingerprint classification the basic patterns are three there's only three patterns and obviously under for example there is a world pattern under the world pattern there will be a double loop world a targeted world imploding world elongated world under the loop there is alna loop there is a, a radial loop arch simple arch tentative so there's so many uh, uh what they call uh, uh, types of finger ridge patterns but it basic ones are the these three now if you look at the world pattern this is called a world pattern this is called a world pattern so it's some, something like a, like a chakra like a, like a, it's actually a spiral you know so and also you can see there's a bullseye here you know this is this is how the world pattern look like and the other one it is called a loop pattern where you can see there is a, a slight curve only at one side curve just on one side you you will see a curve and the other one this is like a, a look like an a, a alphabet a you know it's like you on a you know it's like a something like a hill you know it's 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 actually going upward so this is this is what i want you to do now i want you to take your phone or or, or any tools and then um, on your uh, light flashlight and take your left thumb and then look at your left thumb look at your left thumb okay and then ask yourself that left thumb which which type of fingerprint pattern that you have is it a whirl is it a loop or is it a arch okay ask yourself is it a a b or c okay so this is something that uh, you can uh, you can identify this is why 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 there is a left thumb why there is a left thumb left thumb technically is your ability left thumb is directly connected with your prefrontal and the right thumb is connected with the, the left prefrontal and the right prefrontal very much connected personality okay now once you identify that i want you to look at the interpretation of your personality now if you are a world personality if you are personality in the whole world the whole population there's only 30% the population is come under this personality which is the world personality these people all are born leaders uh, they are very rational target oriented competitive contestable challenging fast firm accurate um, subjective self conscious individualistic uh, a tough to persuade atten uh, attention to they 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 give a lot of attention to professional image and these people are very dominant character people 
you know you could see that somebody that uh, is there in the leadership and one person is managing 100 people 200 people and you can see this this person is a very dominant character and high chances it will be a world pattern okay so see if it's resonate with you now second let's go into a loop pattern loop pattern personality people they are very much on people oriented people there's 70 percent of the whole population is come under loop personality they are people oriented romantic enjoy freedom live in the present moment you know they are very adaptable they are very flexible they're like a water you know they can go and uh, you know go to any place and then they will try to adapt according to the situation why but the world personality not like that they are very uh, they are, i would not say read something like that they are very much strong you know the adaptability is not so much but loop is very much adaptable okay and also soft uh, they, very important is adaptive to the environment soft gentle easy going don't like to contradiction don't like to um, conflict with people um, they accept people's opinion um, flexible compatible thoughts uh, emotional they are very emotional and when the loop personality become a leader they become a democratic leader okay so world personality more towards an autocratic leadership <laughs> something like that okay now another very rare personality a rare type is what's called an arch pattern there's only three percent of the world population you can find arch pattern a very very rare if you see this pattern in your finger on your left thumb that means you will fall under this arch personality so arch personality people are very much uh, what you call uh, um, people around you they might not understand you and then you always <laughs> please remember you're only three percentage of the whole population Me meaning to say out of 100 people there's only three people uh, that you can that that will be a, a, a similar like you so sometimes they have this misunderstanding they have a lot of conflict within themselves you know so they are very much um, safe and practical routine stable they can do one task for many years um, they like routine work nine to five job uh, they stick to the rules and regulations prefer simple clear concrete thinking detail oriented and then sometimes they also a little bit defensive okay so these are the very uh, I would say very simple explanation about the behavior behind the pattern. Okay, so through this, through this, we also can able to map, we can able to map uh, through your fingers, we can able to map your cerebral cortex and we can get a lot of information about this a lot of information for example are you a left brain person or a right brain person um, are you a motive learner or a reflective learner are you a good starter or you are just uh, always think but you don't behave and uh, even even here you can actually see uh, uh, you know through this. this this is a summary report of of an individual who uh, who who, who takes this uh, this uh, genetic profile so now this is very useful for me because i not only can able to see what is this person's inborn talent but also can able to uh, identify if there is uh, any uh, neuro uh, degenerative uh, issues for example like uh, adhd or for example like uh, uh, autism down syndrome um, you know, one of the one of the uh, a student came to me and then uh, you know uh, asked my help to actually identify his inborn talent. Now, um, when I look at his inborn, when I look at his report, only one part of the brain. You see, obviously, this left and right brain, right? 
But if you are right brain, that means variance should be 5% and below. The variance shouldn't be 10% or 20%. That's abnormal. This, this person, this boy, the difference is 60-40. Right brain is 60% and left brain is 40%. Now, when I do the reading, when I'm uh, when I, when I'm do the reading, the boy actually said, uh, Mr. Prabhu, uh, actually I'm diagnosed with five issues by a clinical psychologist. I got uh, manic uh, depression, I got uh, generalized anxiety disorders, and there's uh, so many. Now the thing is, when you look at only the mind, that's how you can pick up things. Yeah, you have that issue, this issue. But the thing is, when I look at the brain, it is just one issue. It is just one part of the brain is 60%, which means what? There is, there is more blood flow in the right brain and more oxygen in the right brain compared to the left brain. So it is a very imbalance and, you will sh and it will show in terms of behavior. So this is one of the example, you know? So we, we can also look into these, uh, if, you, if you see this, uh, I'm not sure if it's very clear. If you can see this, this is a left brain. This is the data all taken from your fingers, fingerprint, uh, from their fingers, fingerprints. So there's also percentage, there is also the pattern and there's also what's the percentage. So through this, we can tell you which are you are more into. You have talents in terms of musics. You have talents in terms of um, what we call, uh, you know, speech. You have talent in terms of managing people. And uh, you also can look into whether what types of learning is better for you. Uh, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, what kind of person you are, you know, an intelligent quotient, you know, in terms of EQ, IQ, AQ, CQ, multiple intelligence, you know. So rather than going through a series of questionnaires, just we can take your fingers and then we can tell you this is, and this is 99% accurate. This is 99% accurate. Okay. And it's so easy for, for people like me to, I, I, I use this for many purposes. I use this for, uh, to, to explain their inborn talent. There's two things, right? If you look at the Maslow hierarchy of needs, if you look at Maslow hierarchy of needs, you will see there is a pyramid, right? And the bottom of it is more on a basic needs and the top of it is more on what's called a self-actualization, right? Now, just before Maslow uh, died, he have created another one more level higher than self-actualization. There's something called a self-transcendence. Now, I can use this report and I'm, I can tell you what is your self-actualization is your true potential. And also I can tell you your life purpose, but that is more on uh, psychological method using the brain, uh, the mechanics and through a psychometric uh, a questionnaires and uh, some method. And I can able to tell you, this is what is your self-actualization. This is what your self-transcendence, which is your a meaningful, uh, a purpose of, of your life that you want to serve. You see, so this is one of the example. And I use this for many purposes. I use this for couple counseling uh, to find out, you know, uh, to understand uh, the husband and wife, uh, the couples. I use this to, you know, to see if there is any mental health issues. Um, I, it's, it's a, it's a multi-dimensional usage and it's very interesting. Okay. So that is one of the example. And you can also look at this, what's called, uh, um, what type of uh, career is actually suitable for you by using this. Are you into management or finance or sports, uh, psychology? Like I said, this method, it is not new. It is more than 200 years old, nearly 300 years old science. And it is, they have developed, developed and they perfected it and they developed and they perfected it. But unfortunately, the more power you give to people in the past, the more empowerment you are actually giving to them. Okay. So it is not so good for those who are 
above us controlling us so but that is that is in the past but now it's different we have more challenges now we have more issues compared to our forefathers so we need to access our intelligence this is the very important now when i say there is um, challenges when i say there is a challenges one of the the, the, the current challenges we all facing, um, I would say it's in a very beginning stage, um, but this is not the end. Um, so the AI, artificial intelligence is, some says is, 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 is better for us. I, I agree in, 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 to a large extent, but some also says that it is actually a threat for, for, for people because it's, technically replacing our jobs our careers you know and the ai it's the 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 way the ai is actually goes is very very uh, fast um you know there is a there is a, a quote by peter diamantes he's actually a futurist um within 2000 um 20, 2024 to 2028 Within four years, the world will see the difference equivalent to 1900 to 2000. The 100 years of the difference you will see in four years time. So this is all, you know, the, the, the way how, how much the AI actually is developed and the technology. Now, if you look at the uh, human productivity in the past, okay? Of course, there is a there is a wave, right? There is a wave, agricultural wave. Uh, first wave is agricultural wave. Second wave is an industrial wave. Third wave is an information wave, and the fourth wave is the what's called an automation and artificial intelligence. Now, here, nearly nearly two thousand years, we don't have the in terms of productivity, it is the same. For example one human one man can only able to carry uh, for example uh, two tons of weight so if you want to carry 200 ton then you need to have 200 people that is the initial stage but later on the industrial phase took over the industrial age took over so where the human human muscles are replaced by machines replaced by machines so example like uh, a lorry you know uh, uh, you know few hundred ton uh, uh, lorry it can actually carry um, you know hundreds of hundreds of tons of weight but you only need one percent to actually move one place to another place so this is industrial phase this in this level the technology have replaced our muscle now in terms of information age information age and this what's called automation age it is no longer replacing our physical strength it is already replacing our mental ability and strength you know this is where uh, the technology becomes smarter you know you just say you wanted to buy something and you can see there is a lot of ads will pop out and then will you know push you or in a way they ask you to buy you know because repetitive algorithms and so and so i think all uh, we can experience this and this uh, there's a citizen uh, shimp uh, given to a robot uh, if not mistaken in 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 uh, middle east country so all these things are there um, i'm not sure about this terminator <laughs> maybe it comes or may not okay so move to the next now when we talk about uh, human intelligence according to this science uh, science of uh, uh, dermatophysics it states that all of us are genius all of us are genius that means we have every individual we have an uh, enormous amount of uh, intelligence and ability but the only problem is the environment that we live that actually does not allow us to express our intelligence okay i give an example 
So if you want to plant a, a strawberry uh, a fruit, you must have a different climate. You know, you can't actually uh, plant somewhere in KL, you know, you need to plant somewhere in uh, a Cameron Highland, you know. But this is the same thing apply for us. If you have a wrong environment and uh, it is not actually allowing to, to, to express uh, your intelligence, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, you will not able to. Okay, so this is one of the theory by Mr. Mihali. He came up with this theory by uh, in, in the 1970s. Okay. This is uh, something called a state of flow, a flow state, flow state. So what is the flow state over here? Um, if you can see that uh, Michael Jordan, uh, Einstein, A. R. Rahman, uh, you know, Ronaldo, Michael Jackson. So, so let's say, let's say, um, like uh, Einstein's parents uh, don't allow him to actually, uh, you know, go study mathematics or physics. What will happen to the world? You know, no, you only study music. You don't study, uh, you don't go and do physics. You, you study music. What will happen to him? Same go to Michael Jordan, you know. Um, ask him to work an accountant. And um, probably Michael Jackson, um, ask him to be a, a manager of a, of a company. What do you think will happen to, to, to the world? It's a loss. So what I'm trying to say here is, if you have the intelligence and you are not developing it, it is a big loss, not only for you, is for the whole world. You know, look at, look at our Malaysian, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, uh, people who are very successful. You know, look at, look at the company Grab, look at uh, some other companies are uh, actually born in Malaysia. You know, how, how they can actually do really well because they are doing something which is aligned with the inborn talent and obviously through life experience and uh, you know knowing the inborn is one thing and bringing to the next level it requires a skill set most of us we do have a skill set but we are not aligning with the inborn talent okay so that is one so how many just just ask yourself how many times that you in your past maybe you've experienced this um, when you do a particular thing you feel that you are in the zone being in the zone that means you only know to do that particular thing and you totally disconnected with the external world you know ask yourself if you have it's good it gives you some indications now, the second one is time stands still. You know, they can work on something. You can, you would have worked on something and you don't feel that time is actually moving. You know, you are just extremely focused on particular thing. And you look and lost track of time and space. You ignore food, water and sleep. You know, when you are in the flow state, you ignore food, water and sleep. But when you're working, for someone, you look at the watch. Okay, this is my lunch time. Okay, I have to go lunch time. You know, I, my job is finished. I want to go back. You know, how many times have you seen this? But when you're working on your flow and your inner intelligence and you are passionate about something, you don't feel that. Correct? And things become easy for you. Effortless during an extreme challenge. It becomes easy. Look at Elon Musk. Do you know that Elon Musk is actually a, uh, he, he's, uh, he got this uh, condition called Asperger. It's a mental health condition. You know, now most of the Asperger children, they, they are in their own world. They cannot actually communicate properly with us. There's a, a huge level of distortion between their world and our world that's the, the reality is distorted but elon musk i would i would 
I would say maybe is the parenting. Uh, the Elon Musk have actually, he can manage to connect his world to our world and he does an exceptional thing. It's amazing things, right? Impossible things. We all can able to do this. This is the 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 idea what what, what I'm trying to explain over here. Okay, uh, you'll be fully uh, fully uh, present. Uh, you lose sense of self. Research and examine people who involve in activities for pleasure without expecting reward, money, or fame. Some people they just do certain things not for money, not for reward because they feel they love what they do. Uh, this is a flow state. Now, the beautiful thing about our inborn genetic or a dermatographic test is if you are aligned with your inborn talent, you get the state of flow 100% and it's very easy for you. I have, I got a chance to actually uh, uh, did a counseling or, um, for many successful people who already 60 years old, um, um, 50 over years old, you know. Um, these are people who are very successful in career. Uh, they are not coming to see me in terms of career. They are coming to see me because they have other personal issues, relationship issues, and maybe, and sometimes they have another goal to achieve. So as a hypnotherapist, I help them. But when I look at their report, I see from the day one until now, they only do, think, behave, align with the inborn talent. And by the age of 60, they are in a different level. So this is my experience. Whatever that I'm sharing is my experiences. And uh, dermatoclyphic, I have uh, a team in, 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 in overseas. Uh, they are all into this field nearly 20 years. I have a professor, professor of neurology, who is actually guiding me, uh, uh, sharing a lot of things. We do a lot of case studies on this and a lot of uh, uh, things, uh, we, we, a lot of outcome we can able to give. You know, that's very interesting. Uh, and, and, and it's a very, uh, 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 we can give solution easily. That's what I'm trying to tell. Now, what experts say? Uh, if you have the opportunity, please go and then read books uh, by uh, Robert Plomin, a professor and behavioral genetics expert from the Institute of King's College London. Uh, he have authored a couple of books, very interesting books. He is in the area of uh, behavioral genetics. Um, I'm pretty sure it's, it, it will be a very much beneficial for all of you because of your, you know, because uh, whatever that you do, it's directly connected with this. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, studies. He says 32% to 62% of a person's success is influenced by the gene of that person. Gene of that person. Now, I can, I can give you an example. Um, one of the child psychologists uh, came to me. Uh, she told me, Prabhu, uh, I think, uh, please do a test for my son. Uh, I've actually put him in a medical school, but he cannot perform. He can't, he can't perform at all. And when I do the test, I look at the test and then uh, I tell him, any of your family members to IT, IT field or technology or IT re related field? And she told me, yes, yes, yes. My husband is a IT guy and uh, my you know, husband's uh, family members, all of them are IT. So, now I told her, you see, you want your son to study uh, or, or, or become a doctor, but what's in the inborn talent, it's not that. Okay. Not to say we cannot, we cannot actually, he, not to say he cannot study uh, medicine, but the thing is he's already struggling. You know, because we can still, we can find a way to align with this inborn talent, you know, for, like for adults, like for adults, right? Uh, we have uh, what's called, uh, you know, uh, I, I can give you an example, another example. He's a 55 years old. He is an, uh, he got an accounting firm uh, and he hates what, he, what he's doing because for many years he's doing that and he, and, and he don't like it at all. 
So when I look at this report, it's more to teaching. So I ask him, have you ever teach accounts to any anybody in the past? He said, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, I did that. Then what happened to the student and what happened? You know, how do you feel? I see. And then he said, I feel really good. I feel really good. And then they can manage to score very well. So I asked him, sir, you know what? <laughs> uh, I'm not asking to stop because that actually feeding you at this stage. Um, go and do teaching. And he's from Penang and they, he have started his own, uh, at, uh, what they call a center, uh, purely teaching accounts. And he's doing very well. And same goes to this boy. The boy uh, now, uh, he, he's already graduated. Uh, he, the, the mother, um, you know, communicated with the boy and then they actually put, uh, put him under uh, an IT, uh, IT uh, course. And that, that boy is in a, he, he was in a Dean list. So yeah, we just place where they belong. Simple as that. Right, so <laughs> this is one of the, uh, you know, I think you can look at this con uh, conversation. Uh, this, this one guy is actually uh, uh, asking, are you concerned about the increase in the artificial intelligence? And the other person said, no, but I'm concerned about the decrease in the real intelligence. Yeah, so there is something we need to look into. Yeah. Well, whatever that I do, I do a genetic profiling. It comes with the 49 pages of report, uh, nearly two hours to more than two hours uh, interpretation. It, 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 it requires, uh, even though it's 49 pages, it requires intelligence to interpret. Not many people in this country able to interpret it very well. Uh, we have a team. Uh, they are actually doing very well on interpreting and we got, uh, it's, it's a lifelong learning uh, for this. Uh, detail on your inborn talent, best career pathways for people already adults is more on uh, if they want to do business, most suitable business ventures, strength and weaknesses uh, like this. For example, this particular uh, dentist came to me and then he told me that uh, Prabhu, I'm, I want to be successful. I am a dentist uh, and, and he's a consultant. Um, he is making huge amount of money. He's, he's happy, but he can't save his money. Uh, he can't plan his life. He's already close, uh, close, closer to 40 years old and he's not married. So I look at the report and I found out something. And uh, his report is a little bit abnormal. So I ask him, do you have uh, issues with the attention span? Do you have uh, issues with the impulse control? Um, do you do things last minute? Do you, you know, this some series of uh, questions. He's for everything you'll say, yes, yes, yes. I think you have an uh, issue uh, called uh, ADD, attention deficit disorder. And he's like looking at me and said, yes, you know what? My friend also is a psychologist. She also observed my behavior and told me, I think you might have ADHD or ADD problem, you know? And you are telling me, and when I interpret the report, it's like he's telling me that you, Prabhu, you are inside me, inside my body and telling me who, are, who I am and what I do. So that, that much we can do all the data from fingers, you know, obviously brain health. So what I did is uh, he came to me, I corrected his ADD problem first. Uh, obviously ADHD on a conventional medicine is more on uh, giving them a medicine um, like a Ritalin or a Concerta, those kind of things that must be prescribed by the psychiatrist. Uh, but uh, I take a different approach like uh, hypnosis. Uh, hypnosis is very effective. Um, you can, you can study, uh, uh, you can Google, um, you know, how your brain respond under hypnosis, you know, all these articles are there. So yeah, you can have a look on. Right. So that is my, my presentation for the day. Um, any questions you can actually, uh, you can actually feel free to ask me or you can actually put in the chat.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Prabhu. That was very insightful. Uh, okay, now we will take some time for questions. So students, if you have any questions, you can ask directly. Or you can leave in the chat box or so. Okay, I think if there's no question, I think we can end our session here. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Thanks again for joining us today, Mr. Prabhu. Oh, yeah. And we will see. Yeah, there's a question. Uh, is there, uh, sir, uh, the question, uh, is there anything that genetic profiling, profiling cannot detect? The question, sir? Yeah, there's so many things. Yeah, okay. Is, is, is there any specific question or is it just a very... No, uh, her question is, is there anything that genetic profiling cannot detect? Is there any? Specific? Yeah, obviously it can. It, it cannot. Uh, I would say we use this uh, as a as a tool to. Technically, what we do is we are just looking at your brain. Uh, so every time you have this uh, uh, regions in your fingers, it directly connected with your neuronal density of the brain tissue, and from there we can map the function the function of the brain. So that is what we are doing so the information we derive from this brain mapping is more on inborn mental health and there, there will be a lot of things that we can't detect actually so it's a very uh, a subjective anything else Okay, uh, I think uh, we end our session here. Thank you, everyone. Okay, and thanks again, uh, Mr. Prabhu. Okay, we will see you next time around. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. Appreciate a lot.